Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Mason. I'm one of the pastors here uh, at Resound. We're going to come around the Word of God for just a few moments this morning. And I, I feel like I've got a message on my heart this morning that I feel like, uh, I guess I hope will impact many people here today. Um, because I think it's something that we all desire, we all want, we all want to hold on to and grasp in our lives. And, um, and it's an important, an important subject to talk about um, today. We're in the middle of a series. Uh, we've called it the Names of God series. And so if you've missed it or you're visiting today, uh, we are five weeks into our six-week series. So next week will be the last week. And so you're invited to that, of course, as well. And um, we serve one God who is described and known by many names throughout Scripture. How can we understand a God who is so big, so vast, so uh, 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 massive? How can we begin to fathom Him and who He is? His ways, the Bible says, are higher than our ways. His thoughts are, are, are higher than our thoughts. The Bible says that we cannot even understand Him. Our, our brain can't work Him out. And it's actually a good thing because if our brains could work out the Creator and this big, big God, He wouldn't actually be that big. So how can we begin to understand Him? Well, a good place to start is by understanding the names that have been given to Him through Scripture, through the revelation of who He is. And so we've gone through some of these names. He's known by many names. We're just doing six. There's many more. The first name we looked at is the name Adonai. The name Adonai was the highest spoken name of God given to the Hebrew people, given to the Israelites. It was the name that they spoke. It was the highest name that they could give God was this name Adonai and meant that He was the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And if He's not Lord of everything in your life, He is Lord of none of it because He is the Lord of Lords and He is the King of Kings. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. And I love this, but understand what that means. It means that there is nobody above the God that we serve, not even close. There is nobody beside the God that we serve and sing about, not even close. And there is nobody even beneath the God that we sing about because God Himself sent Himself in the form of a Son to the lowest point to die for those who were unworthy to stand in His presence. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He is in a league all of His own. He is God, Adonai, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The second name we looked at was the name Elohim, God the Creator. The God that we serve is the uncreated Creator of all. Everything that is, is because He is. He created everything. He created the heavens and the earth. He created the sky above us. He created the depths below us. He created the fields that we look upon, the mountain tops, the oceans. He created the birds of the air, the beasts of the field and the fish in the sea. And most importantly, He created you and me. That rhyme just felt like Dr. Zeus just then. <laughs> He created you and me. He knit us together. The Bible says our innermost being, who you are, the Spirit of God hovered above you in your mother's womb and knit you together. It's why at times when you sense the presence of God, it feels all too familiar to your soul and to your spirit for while you were in your mother's womb at the moment of conception, there the Spirit of God hovered over you and knit you together in your mother's womb. You are not a mistake, no matter what has been said over your life. You are perfectly planned and knit together. In week three, we learned that God is our Abba Father. Abba, the Aramaic word for young children to call their father, one that they knew. That God does not want to just be known by your head, but by your heart as well. He wants to know you intimately and deeply like a father does. The Bible says that when we surrender to God by faith, He sends, He adopts us into, our, into His family and He sends the Spirit of our, His Son into our hearts to cry back to Him, Abba, Father. He gives us the experience of being sons and daughters of God. And then our spirit, as it is grafted and connected with the Spirit of God, begins to cry back to its Father as well. And His Spirit bears witness that we are now sons and daughters of God. Last week, we looked at Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is our provider. 
He who made a way where there was no way, who is making a way where there is no way and will continue to make a way where there is no way. He is the Lord who makes a way. Consider the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, takes care of them. How much more will He take care of you? He is our provider of all. And today we're gonna look at A name of God that I think is, like I said before, deeply significant and we've already prayed for it this morning. It's something that I think our world wants to grasp, wants to hold on to, wants to have. It's something that if we don't have, we we struggle through life. It's been in the prayers of millions of people for millions of years, depending on how old you think the earth is, I suppose. But it's been in the prayers of many people for many, many years. Everything in the world could be added unto you. But without this thing, this name of God, you would be on your hands and knees begging for it. You could have everything in the world, but if you do not have this, you would feel like you had nothing. The name that we're going to look at this morning is Jehovah Shalom, which means this, the Lord our peace. The Lord, our our peace. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you so much for your goodness, for your kindness, for your grace, for your joy, for your peace. Thank you for your kingship in our life. Thank you that you're the creator God. Thank you that you provide for us. Thank you that you're our Father. And Lord, I pray this morning that you would do what only you can do and transform hearts and minds by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. It wouldn't take much convincing this morning to convince you that there are parts of the world that are in unrest in our world. It wouldn't take, it would be even shorter convincing to convince you that there is unrest in the hearts of mankind all around the world. And I bet you that for some of you, it would probably take no convincing at all for me to say that sometimes there's this unexplained unrest in your own heart as well in your own heart as well. We are people at times who may feel like we lack lack peace. And so the question that begs in, I guess, all of our minds, if we feel that way this morning is, what are we to do? What are you to do? What am I to do? What is mankind to do? What is the world to do without peace? We beg for it, we try and hold on to it, we try and grasp it, but what are we to do? I'm not an expert. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor, I'm I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a counsellor, I'm not. In and of myself, I have no answer for you for that question, what are we to do? The only thing that I have is the words of Jesus to his disciples the hours before he went to the cross to die. That's the only thing I have. It's the only thing that we have because every answer that the world tries to give you to find peace, accept peace, create peace is all only temporary. We have only the words of Jesus when he spoke to a troubled group of his friends before he was about to die. He was about to go away and die. He was telling them of things that were to come and a lot of them were not good. And he says this in John 14, verse 27. He says this. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. What is the peace that Jesus is talking about in this scripture? The peace that Jesus had in mind may have included world peace. 
The peace that he had in mind may have included national peace, political peace, interracial peace, interreligious peace. They all may have been on Jesus' mind at this time somehow. But church, that is not what is on the forefront of the mind of Christ hours before he went to the cross. It may have been, but that is not what is on the forefront of his mind. How do I know it's not on the forefront of his mind? Because of what he says. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. What's the peace that God is talking about? The deep, unsettling unrest in our hearts. As He talks with His disciples and they look troubled. You look troubled at everything that I'm saying. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Peace I give you, my peace I am giving you. I do not give as the world gives. My peace to your hearts, not to the world, but to the hearts of mankind. The peace He has in mind is to bring peace to the hearts and the soul of mankind. Your heart in this Scripture means your innermost being. It means who you are deep down inside When all of the masks that we put on every day around other people, when all that is gone, your innermost being, that's what the heart is talking about. He's saying, do not let your your hearts be troubled. He is bringing peace to the hearts of mankind, regardless of the peace that is around them. He says, your heart, not the world. He is speaking to his disciples And he tells them later on in the Scripture about the persecution that is to come on Christians. He speaks to them about the natural disasters that are to come. He speaks to them about the falling away, the great falling away of people out of the hands of God and they will choose to not serve Him anymore. He speaks to all of that and He says, listen, you look troubled. Don't let your hearts be troubled for my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. You. In the 20th century, it is estimated that over 20 million people have been martyred for their faith. And I'm sure the number is probably much higher. You hear all around the world, when Christians are martyred from their, for their faith, you hear stories about their bravery and their calm in the face of death. When everything else is taken away from them, how can they be calm and experience a peace? Because He's peace. He leaves with us and His peace He gives. He gives us. I do not give as the world gives. That's what Jesus said to His disciples. I don't give as the world gives. How does the world give peace? Because it does. The world gives us peace of mind, tries to create things to create peace. Gives us retirement packages and superannuation, health insurance, income protection, health advice, synthetic medicines, natural medicines, bomb shelters, employees, police officers, firefighters, security guards, security cameras, deadlocks, getaway resorts, cruises to help us forget about the moments of the world. The world would try and give us peace a hundred different ways. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful they exist, especially the cruise and the getaway resorts. I'm, I'm thankful for them. But Jesus says, I'm not giving you that. I'm not just giving you. I'm not giving you peace of, peace of mind. I'm giving you peace of heart. I'm giving you the kind of peace that is not circumstantially based and cannot be taken away 
If your retirement package was taken away, your superannuation, your health insurance, your medicine, your police officers, your father, all of that stuff, if all of that was taken away, I'm giving you a peace, a deep inner peace that cannot be taken away. It sounds too good to be true. Well, it is true. God is too good. That's not the kind of peace God is giving him. He's not giving us peace of mind. He's giving us the peace that is not circumstantially based. Every single peace that the world tries to give is based on, is circumstantially based and can be taken away. Your peace of mind can be taken away. Jesus Christ has come to give you peace of heart that cannot be taken away when your peace of mind is. He gives us peace even in the trials and the fires of life. As he continues to talk to his disciples throughout John, like I said, he talks to them about the very end of the age when he was going to return. That could be in 10 years, it could be in 20, 50, 100, 1,000 years. He talks to them about that. He says, I'm coming back. You no, know, we sung a song about it. It's when you have a deep peace in your heart, it's the song brings joy, which we'll talk about in a minute. We sung a song about it this, mor- this morning. He's coming back. He's coming back. It's not a weird thing, it's a reality. Jesus talked about it here. And when he goes through all the things in the end times and people falling away and the natural disasters and all the things that come, he says, I have come in all of that. Do not let your hearts be troubled. He says this in John 16, 33, after he tells them all that is to come, he says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace in me, so that in me you may have peace. In this world, he says, you will have trouble, but take what? Take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. I've told you these things so that you may have peace in me. In this world, you will have trouble. Can I tell you something? Peace does not come through the absence of adversities in life. Real peace only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. It makes no sense. In a lot of ways, we can't understand it. And it says that too, Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It surpasses it. You can't make it up. You can't force it. You can't conjure it. You can't just say, peace, peace, peace. I'll have peace. You can't meditate on peace long enough. You can't do that. It surpasses our understanding, but it will guard our, there's that word again, our hearts, your innermost being. It can't be grasped. It can't be forced or made to, to, to happen. We must just simply surrender to it. Surrender to it. Because it's not the peace that he makes. He says, peace I I leave with you and my peace I give you. It's not peace that he makes like the world. The world can make peace. It's peace that he has. It's not made peace for you. It's not made peace for anyone else. It's His peace that He gives to us. So then the question is, what is the peace that Jesus has? The peace of heart that Jesus has is that when He looks to the Father, He sees holiness, righteousness, goodness. He has a perfect connection with the Father. And when the Father looks back at Him, He sees righteousness, Peace. He sees goodness. He, see, he sees a perfect relationship with the Son. 
That's the peace that Jesus has. He has a peace that when He looks at the Father, He sees all that the Father is. And when, he, when the Father looks at Him, He sees righteousness and right standing before the Father. That's the deep and inner peace that Jesus has. His right standing before God. That there's nothing that could, the Bible says there's nothing that could take Him out of His hand, take us out of God's hand, that there is nothing, that Jesus has perfect right standing before God. And moments, hours before He goes on the cross, He says, don't let your hearts be troubled for I am giving you the same peace. I am giving you my peace. How did that peace came about? Came about through the cross of Jesus Christ. For He made a way for every single one of us to enter into what? His peace. What is His peace? His peace is right standing before God. His peace is a deep knowing that He knows, that He knows that God is for Him and not against Him and He's working all things together for the good of those who love Him. He looks at the Father and sees righteousness and the Father looks back at Him and sees right standing as well. His deep inner peace is that He is right before God, the Lord, His Creator, His Provider, His Father. It's Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. He's not the Lord who makes peace. He is our peace. And that peace came through His Son, Jesus, who made a way for you and I to enter into that deep, deep peace. And so now, if the worst thing that could happen to you on this earth is death, then for the Christian... Death is victory. So do not be afraid of the life that is ahead of you. For if you surrender to the Lord, your life, there is a deep and inner peace knowing that you stand before your Creator completely clean and in right standing with Him through the cross of Jesus Christ. It is His peace that He gives you. The Lord is our He is our peace. I will give you peace. Church, the vertical peace that we have with God that came through the cross, meaning that God and, and me, we are at peace. I am at peace knowing that Christ paid for my sin, paid for my mistakes, paid for everything that I would do. And I, and I have peace knowing that I stand righteous before the Father through not means of my own, but through everything that Christ did for me. I stand at at peace with the Father. It's a deep and inner, the vertical peace that we have between the Lord, the Father and ourselves. That is the beginning of all peace. If you try and get peace and do all these things and force yourself and, and do all this stuff to create Your own peace inside of you. Can I tell you that it is only ever temporary or circumstantial because that is the way that the world creates peace. Is there a deep unrest in your soul? Be reconciled with the Father. For you will never find peace on this earth without being reconciled to the Father through Jesus Christ. How do you become reconciled through the Father? Through Jesus Christ, you simply surrender and put your faith in Him. But what about the rest of my life if I surrender my life to Jesus? What about the rest of your eternity if you don't? We must surrender. And I can tell you something, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart. I don't have to convince you. God is big enough. If you would surrender to Him, you would see that there would be a peace that comes. You would see His goodness and His power and His grace. You would see. Don't believe me? Surrender your heart to Jesus and find a deep and inner peace that cannot be shaken 
when your peace of mind is gone. The band can come back up, I'm almost done. We must surrender to it, church. And the last thing I'll say is this is, <clears throat> one of the most amazing experiences I think I've had in my life is uh, when, when Jess and I were youth pastors for a time, uh, we brought back and started a conference in Vanuatu, a youth conference in Vanuatu. And we would bring kids from Australia over to Vanuatu to help us run this conference over there. We partnered with a church over there, an apostolic church, and we would put on this youth conference for, um, for all the churches and all the kids there. And we would take kids over. And I think I was like 23, 24 at the time. How parents let me take their teenagers overseas to Vanuatu is be only the grace of God. Now being a parent, I'm like, I would never do that. But anyway, <laughs> for whatever reason, they did. And so we'd bring these people over. And I remember, I, I can't remember what year it was, but... We had this year and we booked this, um, the church for us, we had either, you know, we had some world peace giving times at the start and at the end of the conference, if you know what I mean. We sat by the ocean and looked out and all this stuff. At the end of the, uh, the, end of the conference, we went on this, they, they organised for us to go on this boat and they took us on this boat around to this private island and we had food there with the kids. It's a pretty amazing experience for me and to have these teenagers with us and they took us to this small island and the people there cooked us lunch and we swam and ate lunch. And then they were like, come on, there's this reef off here. It's amazing. There's this amazing reef off in the, uh, you know, just out there. And we'll take you on this little boat. Now the boat looked like it was about to fall apart. This little dinghy thing that shouldn't be in the water. It would never pass anything in Australia. But there they're just like, come on, jump in here and we'll go out. Now, I'm a little bit scared of the ocean. I'll be honest with you, not the beach, but the ocean scares me. Does anybody else have that fear of the ocean? A few people, the ocean scares me, whales scare me, all that kind of stuff is scary to me. And so we're driving out on this dinghy, there's water in the bottom of the boat, there's all this stuff. I'm a little bit nervous because it's about a few hundred metres off the shore of this random island. And I'm a little bit nervous, but you can't be nervous in front of these Nevan boys. You just can't, like one of them, one of them got their drink bottle and just put it in the water, the seawater, and then just smashed the seawater back and just drank a whole bottle of seawater. You can't be scared in front of a man like that. That man's another, another level. He says, I don't need medicine. A cup of seawater every day, bottle of seawater every day keeps me healthy. Just smash this seawater, just taps his chest two times. You can't, can't be scared in front of a man like that. And we're going off the boat. He's the first one in, no goggles. He just forces his eyes open under the water and just look, no goggles, no nothing, just straight. He can't be scared in front of a man like that. And I'm sitting in, this teenagers jumping in. I had a thought about a risk assessment in my mind, but then that thought quickly floated away. And one that I forgot to do, I think. And anyway, they were in the water and kids jumping in. And I'm like, okay, well, here's something. I'm looking at this thing and it looks, it looks scary because it's deep. It doesn't even look like there's a reef there. It looks like, a horror movie or something. And I'm like, are you sure there's something under there? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Just jump in, go under. And it took me a minute. I had to take a deep breath and eventually just committed to it. And kind of this, I didn't jump because I wasn't that enthusiastic, but I just kind of just fell into the water and looked under the, looked under the water. I had goggles. I can't just hold them open with my eyes and swim around. And I didn't drink the water either, but I just fell into the water and, Honestly, it was probably the most amazing thing. On our honeymoon, we, we snorkeled on the Great Barrier Reef. It did not, it was not even like, it did not even compare. It was full on finding Nemo down there. It was wild. As soon as my head went under, it was, it was just this amazing deep reef with every fish that you could ever think, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And, all of a sudden the noise goes away, everything goes away. There's a family of manta rays that swim deep below and underneath us and everything, all the fear, all the trepidation, everything kind of just fell away. And for a moment, you just feel at peace. And then one of the kids got stung by a stingray and so, not a stingray, jellyfish. And so then it was, stingray could have been dangerous. I got stung by a jellyfish and then it was like kind of over. But for a moment, 
For a moment, there was peace. The only way we receive the peace of God is to let go and surrender our life to Him. I know it looks scary. I know it looks whatever. I know you've probably got a million questions in your mind, but if I do this and if I do that and if I do this and if I do that, there's only one way to receive the peace that Jesus is talking about, and that is to surrender to it. To fall into His loving arms and His grace. To fall into His goodness and His mercy. He is not angry at you, for you are His children. Fall in to His peace. Peace is not something we conjure up from the power of our will. The peace of God is not like worldly peace that we can be smart enough or work hard enough to create this sense of security in us. Because it's not as the world gives. His peace only comes by the surrender of that heart your innermost being, your life. Those who lose their life will find it in Him. That's what, the world, that's what the Bible says. If you don't surrender your pride, you will not surrender your heart. If you do not surrender your will, you will not surrender your heart. If you do not surrender your sin, you will not surrender your heart. If you don't surrender your faith and trust and what you've put it in more than God, you will not surrender your heart. But church, if you can find a way to surrender your heart today, you will swim in His peace. My peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled. There's an old song, like a bridge over troubled waters. So is the peace that Jesus brings through the bridge of His cross. So He stands at the door today and He knocks. Stands at the door of your heart today and He knocks. And He will knock, and He will knock, and He will knock, and He will knock, and He will knock. And if it takes to the very end of your age, He will continue to knock until you surrender to Him. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will now guard your, He'll guard your heart. He'll guard your heart. A deep peace. The covenantal name given to God that they did not speak was the name Yahweh. The proper pronunciation of Yahweh is to mimic breath. Is to mimic breath. They did not have to speak it because every day they woke up and took a breath, they spoke it in their breath. Yeah. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I feel like in this moment, and then we'll pray and then we'll move on with the rest of our, what we got to do today. But I feel like in this moment, there are some of you that have maybe been struggling with an unrest in your spirit. And maybe you've been asking God, Where are you? He's been there in every breath. He's been there in every breath. And He simply stands and knocks. He says, would you surrender that heart to me? I'll give you peace, my peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you wanna surrender your life to Him, maybe for the first time or the second time, I wanna give you that opportunity here today to do so. When I was 16 years of age, someone like me did the same call and I put my hand up for a second and a peace of God that got, that, that I could not explain rested on my heart. I wanna give you that same opportunity today. I'm gonna pray a prayer, prayer. It's a prayer of faith. It's a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer of repentance saying, Lord, I'm coming back to You. If that's you and you want me to include you in, your, in this prayer today, um, then in a moment, I'm just gonna ask you to slip up your hand. No one is gonna be looking around. We're not gonna get you out the front. This is between you and God. Just to say, you know what, Lord, I surrender. 
surrender my heart. So that's you just in a, just for a moment. If everyone could just close their eyes and bow their heads just for a moment. And if that's you, if you wanna be included in this prayer of faith and surrender and, and repentance in this moment, then I'd ask you on the count of three, just to slip up your hand just so I can see who I'm praying for. And it's between you and God and so the rest, it's up to you from here. And, but I would love to pray for you, pray that prayer. If you want me to include you in that prayer and the count of three, just slip your hand up just for a moment. One, two, three. If there's anyone here, thank you, mate. Thank you, thank you. I see those hands. Amazing. If there's anyone else here today, we'll just take a moment more. His hands went up. If there are others here today, I just want to give you a moment because you're worth it. God's not in a hurry. There's anyone else here today? One, two, three. Amazing. Yeah, I see that at the back. Appreciate you. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for every single hand that was lifted today. Lord, I thank you so much for every heart that is turned towards you today. Father, we come to you in faith and we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your grace. Lord God, we come to you and we say that we put our faith in you and the cross to make us righteous before God, to, to give us right standing before God. Lord, we put our faith in you, Jesus, afresh. Lord, would you guard our hearts with your peace? Would your peace enter our hearts today? Would we know a deep and inner peace, Lord God, when our peace of mind is gone? Would we know your goodness and would we know your peace today? Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray that you would guard the hearts and the minds of all who have surrendered their life to you, all who have surrendered their life to you in this moment. Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship You and we give You all the glory. We give You all the praise and we give You all the honour. Holy Spirit, I pray that You would guide us, teach us and show us Your ways. In Jesus' Name we pray. Amen and Amen and Amen. I've asked the band just to sing this a little bit before that just sings praises and glory to Jesus. And I know we have busy weeks and it's a, Many of us, it's a long weekend and we've got things to do, but just at the start of this week, in the moment, just to sing this a few more times. And while we do, surrender your heart to Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. If you've never been in worship before, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is sing the words on the screen and mean it with everything in your heart. Or you, gotta, you might see people lift their hands and close their hands close their eyes. Lifting their hands is the universal sign around the world for surrender. If you've got something you want to surrender to God today, I'd encourage you as the band sings to lift your hands and surrender it to Him and let the peace of God guard your hearts and minds. Would you stand with me, church, as the band begins to lead? And would you just for a moment, take a few moments at the start of your week to surrender your heart, surrender your life, surrender your weeks afresh to Him today. Lord, we worship You. We give You all the glory and all the praise and all the honour. In Jesus' Name. Come on, church, let's take a few moments and sing to Him today.